Hi, my name is Santesh Kalada and in this video I will show you how to handle errors in your N810 workflows because this is very very important especially if you are working for client. For example, workflows can fail for n number of reasons but it is really important that you get informed about this because if you have created an automation for your client and if your workflows fails, you should be the first one to know. Okay? You shouldn't wait for your client to come and tell you, see this has failed. Because if that is the case, there might be delay. You, your client may not notice it. He might notice it after three or four days. So to handle these kind of issues, so I'll show you how you can handle errors instantly in your N810 workflows. And the most amazing thing is that N810 by default gives you an option for this. So you don't really have to create anything from scratch. So just create a new workflow. Go to here and click on add here and search for error you have something known as error trigger. So just add that. And for now, I'll just click on fetch test event. So here is a test event. Now what I will do is, see of course you can set up Slack notification, WhatsApp notification, any kind of notification. For now, I'll show you how to add it in a Google Sheet. For example, I have created a Google Sheet like this. Just three headers, okay? And just the workflow name, the URL of the workflow and the error message. So for now, what I have done is I have clicked on test workflow. But again, I'll show you with the real thing. And I'll go to Google Sheet. And in Google Sheet, up and a row in the sheet. And I'll go to N810 errors and sheet. I'll select the sheet and here workflow name. See, this is the workflow name, workflow URL, this is the workflow URL, and error message, where I'll put it here as well, okay. So that's it, okay, and I'll click on save. And please note that the workflows with, with an error trigger like this, you cannot make it active, okay. So do not worry even if it is in the inactive stage, just keep it as it is. Now what I'll do is I'll open another workflow. I'm not sure it is still loading. I'll just refresh the page. Okay, so I have a workflow like this. So what I have done is I have done it in such a way that in purposefully I have made sure that it will create an error. Because see, I have disconnected the chat model. So this will definitely throw an error. Okay. And make sure that this particular workflow is active. Because for workflows where you are manually testing the workflow, you cannot test it with an error trigger. Only if your workflow is set up as active, you can test it with an error trigger. And before testing it, there is one step you need to do. Just click on the three dots here. Go to settings. And you have an error workflow here. All you have to do is just click here and select your, just select your error handler. In our case, I have created an error handler workflow called workflow error handler. So I just need to search for that. So I'll just search for error, see, workflow error handler. And I'll click on save. And I'll make sure that it is saved. And again, as I told you, I cannot click on open chat and test it here because that won't work. Only in real scenarios, the workflow error handler would work. So what I have done is I have just activated this and I have made the chat publicly available and I'll just copy this URL and let me just quickly open the chat okay. and I'll just type hi. So of course an error happened and let me just show it to you. See 12.44 there an error has happened. Now let me just go to my workflow error handler and search in the executions. See here, 1244. I'll just click on copy to editor and let's see the error trigger. I am sorry, it did not copy, I guess. Yeah, it did not copy to the editor. I'll click on copy to the editor. For some strange reason, it's not coping to my editor. That's okay. 
I'll just show it to you here. So see here, we have the URL and a chat model with subnode should be connected and enabled. And we have the URL of the workflow, that particular execution as well. So now I'm guessing it got, see, got executed. So I'll just open my sheet. See here, the workflow name is here, the URL is here, the error is here. And if I just click on the workflow, it will take me to the execution of that workflow, showing me the error, exact error. See here, it is loading. See, it's showing me the exact scenario where this error happened. So as you can see, this is a very, very straightforward process okay, and a very simple process. It would hardly take you some five to 10 minutes to set up, but this would really, really help you in future, especially if you are charging clients for maintaining the workflow. So please note that this particular error handler, it will work only in real, say, real scenarios. If you are testing a workflow, it won't be caught. Okay. And every day, make sure that in whatever workflow you need to track, just click on this three dots and under settings. And in the error workflow, you set up, select your workflow handler, error handler. So I hope you guys found this video useful. So if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the future videos. Thank you. Thank you for your time.